All right, so we got a hydraulic pump out of a walk-behind mower. Um, specifically, it's a Xmark 60-inch. Uh, I think it's a what TTX 650 EKCE. Um, I don't remember the rest of it. I'll put it in the thing. But anyways, so <clears throat> finally done mowing for the season. This is actually mine. It's not somebody else's. So get to work on my own stuff but uh, what's wrong with this thing is the um, when you're going along and mowing it would start to turn right just randomly it would, it would just like someone put the brakes on and these don't have brakes so I figured it had to be something with the hydraulics so started with the uh, well that and they were leaking the uh, they were leaking out of the bypass valve back here just a little bit and where the case splits they were starting to leak a little bit, and I'm not surprised because this machine has 2,000 hours on it. Um, and I'm pretty sure nothing was ever done to it short of, hey, make it run for this week. So, anyhow, um, I pulled the, I guess it's the right-hand side, pump off, and um, that's probably the worst part of this whole thing is getting it off because it doesn't want to come off very easily. Even that's not that bad. The worst part is taking the, um, actually on, on this one, is taking the pulley, the pulley off the bottom, because this is underneath the deck. So this pulley's up on here, but getting a puller on here and getting it off, and they've probably never been off. So a little bit of work. This is actually the one off the right side here. So anyhow, took it apart, looked at it, and the uh, charge pump is completely wiped out. It just has a lot of scoring and scratching, and I'm sure it's bypassing. So instead of just you know replacing it, because with the current times that is a $975 pump for a new one and 450 bucks for a rebuild, I still gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with that. But I figured before I'm all in on that one, I should probably look at the other one since that has a bunch of wear on it too. I figure if this is going to be totally screwed inside too and it's just not bypassing internally as bad yet so these things were just totally caked because they again like I said they have been leaking so they get that film all over them and it just uh, it just attracts every bit of dust and dirt and stuff so anyhow that's what we got going on that's what we're working on that pump is screwed I need to get I'll show you when I get in here but I figured I'd at least do a video on how to take the thing completely out. And I haven't been in this one yet, so it's going to be a surprise when we open it up and see what's in it. This one was working fine, so we're not expecting any crazy stuff. But, like I said, it's leaking and it needs seals anyway, so we might as well take it apart and look. Um, and see what all we're getting into. So, first thing is this is actually the charge pump up here on the top. This top part. There's a couple different styles of these after looking at parts manual. Some of them have a fan and stuff that go through them. I guess that's on zero turns because they're under a seat. Oh, these are really tight too. This is the last one. Oh, so, um, there we go. You really don't need too many tools to take this thing apart. But, yeah, it's really tight too, so. I doubt this one's been apart just like the other one. So we're gonna see what 2,000 hours of hate and neglect looks like on the hydraulic system. And wait till you see the color of the oil that's in this thing. It's gross. All right, so there's that one. Okay, so your charge pump, this is part on top, that just lifts off, you can see there's a seal that's in there that's going to get replaced, this one is really really hard and brittle, it's probably leaking, it's not, it looked like a crack there, sorry, 
there's a little check valve that's in here, a little check ball. Um, it's down in there. It has a little spring. I'm just going to set that aside for now. The other thing you're going to want with this is plenty of rags. So it's, you know, anything hydraulic is just going to make a giant mess. This isn't even real hydraulic oil either. This is all um, 1540 motor oil. Okay, so rotor comes off. This one actually, surprisingly enough, looks really, really good. Um, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it, but that one looks pretty good. There's not a lot of scoring on it. I'll probably have to take another one apart and show you. Same thing on the uh, the actual rotor, the gear rotor system, and I'm keeping those the same direction that they were, sticking them right back into the charge pump, and over there it goes. So that's what was the problem on that other pump, was it was all eaten into the case up here, into the aluminum. Um, this one actually, and there's nothing I can catch with my finger, so we're going to just leave that one, call it okay, put new seals in it, be good. The other one, it's all eaten into the pump, and there's some scoring on that rotor, so this whole thing is junk, as well as the, uh, um, the housing and the pump are both junk, so that kind of sucks, but it is what it is. So now the next part, which is breaking loose these four um, bolts that hold the head on. So let me see if I can get that check ball out if it wants to come out. There's a little check ball. And the hydraulic party has begun. We've released the stuff everywhere. I'm sure there's a better way to do this. This is one of those things that if you did this regularly, it would really benefit you to find a way to hold this stuff really easily. But since I'm only ever going to do probably two of these, So these are, what size are these? 9 sixteenths? No, they're not. What the heck size are they? They're, not, they're metric, aren't they? Are they? <coughs> 10 millimeter. Go figure. I don't have it over here. So I got something to hang on to. Okay, these are tight. I don't want to pinch anything too hard here. Hurt pump housing. There's one. Now, this is under spring pressure in here. I didn't know that the first time. So, it makes life real fun if you're not ready for it. I'll take these part of the way out. You can see it'll start to let itself up.
Now, be careful because the, oh, it didn't stick that time. Okay, your, what do they call this? It's the, it's the, the piston rotor. Well, they call it a drum kit or something in the parts manual. But, um, it'll stick to the, to the, the housing here just because of the, this cost of the oil because the surfaces are machined so so flat and ground so smooth that it will uh, the oil will create like a suction this one's not all scored up either there's nothing I can catch my fingernail with at, at all I mean it's perfectly there's a little discoloration but for two thousand hours that's good so let me set this back over here you can see the oil that's in here this stuff is just it's nasty. It was probably due. So this is where it gets. There's just no easy way to do it. Take your drum out. Your old five shooter. This is a Smith and Wesson '69. It's a 44 Magnum five shot. It's probably about the same size. It's probably a little bit bigger. Anyway, but there's no scoring or anything in those cylinders. Of that, which I'm guessing is good. You can actually see cross hatching in them, which is kind of cool. And I, I, I don't know much about hydraulics, but anything I read on them, everything's got to be like perfectly clean and machined, which is kind of like an engine, I guess. So, in a way, I guess it's like an engine where it's got to stay clean and pristine the whole way. So, that's getting set back down with some rags. And we have the little plungers and springs themselves. I'm just going to put them back in that little cylinder block. Maybe that's what they call it, the cylinder block. I think is what Xmark or, or these aren't even Xmark. They're made by a company called Hydro Gear, which I found again. I found I, I've already been through that first pump and I found all the part numbers and stuff I need to replace those parts that were bad. I just figured I should look at this one too, but these really don't look. This doesn't look nearly as bad as another one. Well, I'll have to. I put it back together just so I don't lose anything until nothing gets dirty, but when I get parts to rebuild it or replace it or whatever, or if I get a rebuild, I'll take that one back apart so you can see with the carnage is on it, but even you can see there's not really a whole lot of, I mean there's just like discoloration, it's not even like wear. Okay, so this is where did I screw up the last time. So. Down in this pool of goo is a spring and a washer on this input shaft. Then there's a thrust bearing under that that's on a swash plate underneath that that's connected to this um, I guess it's the what the the actuator, swash plate actuator. I don't know. It's what connects to the handle on the mower. I mean you you do this and it it, it either puts hydraulic oil to the front or the back of the wheel motor. So it goes forwards or backwards. I mean, I guess, I don't know, I guess it seems simple, but nothing's ever simple. Alright, so, there's the spring, there's the washer, I'm just taking them, putting them, flipping them upside down, putting them right back onto that cylinder block where they go. Let's see, can I get the thrust bearing? There's the top of the thrust bearing, looks okay. Can I get the bearing part of it? Yes. There's those. They're captured in there. They're all here. They look okay. I'll have to clean them up later. Okay, so that's all I think I can get out of here. There's the swash plate at the bottom of the bearing. So this is all under oil. The way that sits in there like that. And that then that piston barrel rolls around on that. So when this moves back and forth, it pushes one side or the other of those pistons and tells the pump which way to pump the oil out of it. So it's pretty neat. I don't really know the right way to explain all this stuff, but it's pretty neat. And there's a little tiny square piece of metal that goes in this swash plate right like that. So it helps that move up and down while that pin's in there. Alright, now I think I can finally dump all the oil out of this. Where did... I'll just use this rag. I've got oil everywhere. 
in the puddle. Yeah, we did go genius you ever filled your water bottle. <sighs> Shoot. Okay. Where can I put the water bottle? Oh, thing left is this input shaft which I'll some more on this thing. I don't see any metal shavings which is good. See there's actually like bearing something like phenolic or turkite or some kind of I don't even know. Some plastic shit. It keeps this thing lubricated in there. Alright now on the bottom side under this puddle of goo is snap ring which you gotta get out like that and that'll probably get replaced that goes in there then you pull in put shaft this out so I just put something put a rag over the end of this just pop it down for once or twice under its own weight and then that pops out and you have your I gotta get the key out of that shaft still but you got your loaded seal with spring in it it seals the bottom of the pump and you have your input shaft bearing so last thing you gotta do is take out the little um, there's a bunch of junk on it, but the little actuator comes out the side, and then there's a bushing in there, and all these O-ring seals, and I guess that's really all there is to it. I mean, I'm going to take all these housings and stuff to where I work, because there's a parts washer there that I can clean the stuff up before I put it back together, but at least now I know I've got one good pump, one pump that needs a lot of parts, or it gets replaced, so we'll see. Thank <laughs> you.